Hey there everybody, how's it going? Back so soon. I told you I wasn't going to make you wait a month for another Pathwatcher video. Though in this video I actually wanted to spend more time kind of expanding upon a few things that we have touched upon in the past and to talk about some things that are going on in the very near future and what you might want to know about things like the numbers, right? We're going to be talking about the numbers, and if you don't know what I mean by the numbers, the non-homogeneous palindromic numbers, the 434, the 121, the 232, what the heck are we talking about when it comes to those numbers? Why are those appearing? I wanted to do a special talk for the Path Watchers in this video, and anyone else who's seeing those numbers in this video who's doing the spiritual work with the with gatekeeping, grid working, Pathwatcher role or any other kind of light server, light worker role. And then I'm going to also put up another video about that later on for general audiences, so to speak. And so that way we'll have so much, so, so much information about those numbers. So don't worry, we're going to get to that today. But first, I wanted to let you know a couple of things. First off, the forums for the Pathwatchers are up on my website. I do not have a direct link on my website to the forums themselves, however. I have actually included links in the descriptions of each of the Pathwatcher videos so far and will continue to. Remember, this is not intended to become a sensation. This is meant to stay sacred and stay a disciplined spiritual practice. So I really don't want this to kind of explode. I'm really under strict supervision right now to not let this turn into something that is just sort of a random anything and everything kind of push. So this is also because a lot of other roles are going to be coming online here very soon for other folks, other groups. Again, we've got a big oversoul movement going on here. Populations kind of shifting about socially, spiritually, all kinds of activations going on. And so if everyone is running around doing the hashtag light worker thing, you know, they're not looking for their own role. They're not actually being open to what the uniqueness is. And we have to push away from that because, again, the unique role, the unique expression of you and your higher self working in conjunction is key. And so for the forums themselves, please, if you are interested, if you are seeing the signs, right? You're a part of the Path Watcher population, so to speak, whether it's you're seeing the non-homogeneous palindromic numbers, the 434, the back and forth, but not all the same numbers, right? Or you're seeing the tridents, you're experiencing the, the loops, you are working the grid, you are working the gateways, you are activating the grid and, you know, firing it up. I'm noticing, by the way, a lot of you doing that this last week, which is awesome. Every once in a while, a half hour will go by and it feels like I am doing it myself. And I'm like, I didn't turn that on. Whew, what the hell is that? And all of this energy just kind of flows through. And it's really cool because it lights up not even my space or just my space. I should say it actually lights up the entire you know, neighborhood. It lights up pretty much the whole span of where all these crystals have been laid. And we actually had a bit of a pulse fly through here about 45 minutes ago, which would have been about quarter to midnight on the 10th of October 2019, if we want to backtrack and look into that. So thank you to whoever was doing that or working that one. I appreciate that. I appreciate you. And everyone else does too. And I'm sure your higher self does as well. And if you're interested, again, check out the forums. Boom, follow the links below. We're actually going to be talking about some key dates coming up here in the rest of October. We've got a meteor shower gateway opening up again. After this peak on the 13th, we've got another gateway on the 22nd and the 21st. And then I also want to discuss coordinated efforts, getting to see where everyone might be, talk about where certain things might be good to open up gateways if we could ever take trips, whether alone or, you know, meeting up, hanging out, whatever, and seeing what would happen if we started to work in more of a unity focus on tapping into the grid at certain times all together, seeing what shifts we could make when we're all doing it at once. So that's what the forums are for. 
Now, before I step on to the numbers thing, I do want to talk about the, the roles and the, the populations and, again, Pathwatcher or not Pathwatcher thing. A lot of folks have been writing comments and sending messages. I've been getting a lot of messages on Facebook lately. Instagram, I've had a few communications, but not quite the same. And a lot of folks are curious about, well, I'm not a part of the Saturn in Scorpio or Saturn in Sagittarius generations. I'm not a part of those years, the 1953 to 1959 or the 1982 to 1988 group. What does that mean? Or what have you? Or this worked just fine for me, even though I'm not a part of it. And it's like, of course it will. Again, those are just the highest populations of this role will come through those generations. You might not be a part of that generation, but if you're seeing the numbers and you're seeing the other signs like the tridents and you're doing the work and you're feeling the grid, you're knowing exactly when and where to go and do some work to clear some of that old density, that old debris of that lower dimensional experience, you're it. You're in. It's totally cool. And if you don't feel that and you're not having that experience, that's okay too. That just means you have a role that's probably going to turn on here in a little bit. It's important that we leave the idea of inclusivity, exclusivity, and belonging in the past, right? Again, that's just old junk playing itself out again. It doesn't make a person more special. It doesn't make a person less special. Pathwatcher, like any other title, like any other thing, is just uh, something to put on a CV. That's it. It's not an elevation. It's not an opportunity to belong. It's not an opportunity to exclude and feel like you're part of the secret club either. So that's all I'm going to say about that for now. But feel free to hang out at the forums. Just as long as we keep it on topic, okay? I don't want to see any reading requests or business shares or anything like that. It's got to be strictly about, again, work, light work, elevating, and accelerating the shift in consciousness. Whatever role you've got. Path watchers or whatever. It's all good. So what is going on with these numbers? What are we doing with these numbers? Why am I seeing these numbers? These numbers themselves, it is possible to break them down into their individual digits to kind of see what is playing out when we look at the meanings of these numbers. And I do have a couple of videos talking about the meanings of numbers. I'll put the most recent video about what you are looking at with certain numbers, what certain numbers mean and signify when they're showing up as an omen. And I do it in a way where it's not necessarily geared towards a specific path, right? Because some people look at them as, you know, a certain function of numerology. Some people relate them to Kabbalah. Some people relate them to the East. Some people relate them to angel numbers. I take the most universal truths across all and I use those. I don't focus on validating or affirming a particular path or language in that in that sense. That's not really my intention. But if you're going to choose to read the numbers, that's fine. But really, the most important thing is that you're noticing the numbers. That was my cat snoring. You'll probably hear him snoring. Noticing the numbers themselves. Paying attention to not necessarily the fact that it's just showing up, but they read almost like they can loop. And they are alerting you to a loop, a back and forth loop. When you see these non-homogeneous palindromic numbers, be prepared. You're going to be seeing cycles on repeat. It's, a, it's an alert about a timeline loop that is going on in your experience. Or maybe in the experience of an environment that you are moving through. Or a timeline loop that is actually occurring because of a certain level of energy or density or frequency that has actually been introduced into your field, either by yourself, carried by yourself, or maybe through, again, an experience with a certain environment, maybe another person, and it's causing the energy fields to move and evolve in a way where they are actually constricted or compressed. Do not take this personally when you see this number. Do not make this about war. Do not make this about psychic attack. Do not make this about any of that. Pay attention to what you are being told about, though. Something can go no further beyond this point. 
And it's also important to understand that sometimes your guidance, your higher levels, right? Your higher selves, if you have angelic guidance, deity guidance, whatever guidance you have, galactic guidance, may also introduce these numbers into your experience to be seen in order to understand where there is a point that you can go no further unless and until you are actually moving another piece or you are moving or making a change in another area and breaking a loop or breaking a cycle. I tend to see these a lot when either A, again, I have been moving into or shifting into a space where there is a considerable amount of density and lupin going on, whether it's with people or a space, a town, or I myself am not necessarily making progress where I need to be making progress because of either a density, a distraction, or maybe some kind of loop going on within myself, and my higher levels are trying to really get my attention. And that is where I usually get to work. If you are working in this, consider how do I start clearing and paying attention? Paying attention to where something is about to go in a cycle. When we talk about a cycle, we talk about loops in this respect. This could actually be a loop that plays out in a family, a loop that plays out in a relationship or an individual, or again, in an entire community or an entire space. In the Spiritual Density and Timeline Loops video that I put out, I'll put a link in the down bar below, I talk about how the substance that is the leftover debris and junk of the third and fourth dimensional experiences that is still present, kind of sloshing around on the new higher multidimensional Earth experience. Again, it's being kind of held here. It's getting cleared, it's being purged naturally, and again, with some intervention and some activity by certain peoples, you know, going out and actually doing that work, opening these gateways, thank you for doing that. But what's happening with this, this density as it moves around, think of it like the leftover veils, right? What are veils? Veils are curtains, veils are obstructors. They contain, they retain, they block, they redirect. And when we have that just sort of sitting with no support from the cosmic experience or actually not even the earth experience anymore, it's sort of like an old artifact on new earth, so to speak. And if you've ever seen a sci-fi film or a fantasy movie where, you know, they go back in time or they discover some old relic and they find a way to power it up, but all it can do is kind of play on a loop over and over and over again. It's not compatible with the new technology or it only functions with a certain type of energy or certain type of magic moving through it. And so it just kind of loops and does its own thing over and over and over again. That's what that is doing. And you're in a space or you may be carrying that and your higher levels are kind of paying attention and they're going, hey, look, you just picked up some crud when you stopped at that gas station. You just, you know, moved into a space where this whole beach has had a lot of that kind of stuck on it for a while. Either do something here or make sure you clean yourself up when you get home and just work on clearing a little bit. Sometimes it'll say, hey, look, you are not making a lot of progress right now and you're waiting for some breakthroughs. A lot of things in your life are stalling. You're not actually making progress. You're not seeing the growth you want, even in areas in your personal journey. Look at the loops that are playing out in these areas. Look at the loops that are playing out in you and find out what else you should be doing to break this pattern. Because if you've done the same 50 things over and over and over again with no results, well, even in old paradigm, that wasn't going to work. In new paradigm, we need to just kind of get rid of the very thing that's holding on to that loop, holding on to that pattern. So pay attention. It's asking you to look and see. Your higher levels are going, look, isn't there something else we should be doing right now? Or again, you're carrying a lot of density or you've picked up 
you've been introduced to a very dense energy field, it's kind of throwing you off. You're in a space where it's holding on to a very dense structure. I've walked through backyards and through, not trespassing, I was invited. <laughs> By the way, I don't want anyone to think I'm like hopping fences. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm just planting some crystals, go back to sleep. No, I'm not doing that. But I've walked through backyards, I've walked through parks where, you know, once I've even gotten into these very, very lucid, high five, low six kind of spaces in myself, I'm touching the trees and I'm even trying to communicate and I'm trying to have this sort of heart connection with, you know, the trees, the, the spirits, the elementals of the area. And they're like, we, I was like, there's a loop going on here. And, you know, even the tree will be like, yeah, it won't stop. It won't stop. And so I'm like, okay, hold on a sec. I know what to do. Start clearing. Start working on clearing that density. You're being alerted to a loop going on in your space and in your life. And I think on some level, it's a very unique omen to get because I've not seen a lot of people speak about this online. I've even tried, before I even bothered just kind of looking into my own experience, when I first started seeing them, before I started really connecting, I even tried going online, looking in books. Nobody has anything to say about this. And I feel like that's because, again, this is a relatively new role right? It's a relatively new experience. It's a hybridization of grid work, gatekeeper work, light server work, and a bit of magic and mysticism. It's a hybridization. And that's kind of what maybe is also a good, interesting thing to pay attention to. You have a chance to actually interact with this density. You're made up of stuff that's resilient enough not to actually get sucked in and trapped there and you're able to clear it. So that's why you're being shown these numbers. You have to get to work. If you see these things going on around yourself a lot, three times a day, four times a day, five times a day, your higher levels are trying to warn you, hey, listen up. This is on a really, really strong loop right now. You need to start clearing. You need to tap in now. And you need to figure out what else you are not doing you're stuck in a loop that's keeping you from doing some higher level work, some higher level spiritual work. And if you're not careful, you're just going to be right back here doing it again next week, right back here again, doing it again next month. How long do you want this to go on? It is a wake up and it's a really, really cool way for, you know, help to let you know what is going on. So just pay attention. We'll talk a little bit more about that in the forums. I'd like to have a longer discussion about that there. And of course, you know, these videos are not going away. I'll be coming back with more, but I think that that's something to pay attention to, especially as we go through these jumps and these shifts right now. Timeline compression, density, timeline constriction, a lot of timeline purging is going on right now. And we talk about timeline purging. It's not quite what you would think. It's not about separation. It's not about separation at all, but when we think about timelines in terms of, say, multiverse theory, different choices, different vibrations, different energetic availabilities, different energies exuded create different paths and different timelines as well. And so we are going through a radical shift on the planet where, again, what is left of that old 3, 4D density and debris is getting cleared and purged. So the collective timeline towards a shift is speeding up and it's getting away from slower, more maybe dogged or maybe, yeah, I'm going to say slow paced transition periods. And we're going through an acceleration of ascension. So in order to do that, a lot of lower or lesser timelines need to kind of start getting dropped off. And it has nothing to do with superseding the free will. It's never going to break anybody's free will. But what it is going to do is it is going to change the potential for experience, for direct experience, and again, the waking up. Everyone has a choice to whether or not they want to go further on their path at their own pace. But changing the environment, changing the spiritual atmosphere and the spiritual ecosystem so that it can provide that direct experience Again, the sun on the closed eyelids. That is what it's all about. 
So just something to, to think about there. And I wanted to, again, spend some time on them numbers. Also, really quick before I let you go, I have just some closing thoughts and some urging that's also been coming in. Something that I guess I did not exactly spend a lot of time on or any time on talking about in, the, in, in number two was that you do want to also spend some time not just clearing, eradicating, and purging dense energy fields wherever you go. As you work the grid, right, we're calling in this pure higher light consciousness away from the grid, away from the actual work that's being done there. We're calling in this higher light. Eventually, think about it this way, eventually that's going to be on, and we're just going to have that connection to pure consciousness, pure source consciousness flowing through the earth again as a multidimensional experience very, very soon. Veils gone. So work also needs to be done when it comes to creating opportunities for that type of environment to be flourishing in a way that has nothing to do with old paradigm history, old paradigm conditioning. We talk about creating. What are you thinking about creating? What kind of experience do you want to actually have created for yourself and your nearest and dearest, but also something for maybe even the entire collective? I have been focusing on a unifying collective awakening experience. All veils gone. <laughs> All visibilities up. Just complete purging, which is usually why whenever I open a gate or I tap into the grid, I'm seeing, again, orbs with the naked eye. I'm seeing spirits, I'm seeing all kinds of cool stuff going on. And that's what I kind of want for everybody. <laughs> In the highest interest of all concerned, again, I am surrendering this to higher levels. It's not like anything disastrous is going to come from that before, you know, it even gets a chance to. It's going to go through a perfecting and clearing process. Don't worry, it's not like... It's going to be some, some disastrous intent. It's actually there for, again, people to be able to witness themselves, to witness their true highest self, to witness just the boundlessness and the infinity is what I would like for everyone to be able to know and to see. And that is what I'm trying to work towards. What are you trying to create for the collective? And again, think about it from the perspective of a higher level. Higher levels aren't really too invested in 401ks and a friendly housing market and a new car. Higher levels are not necessarily focusing on twin flames and lottery tickets for that matter. On the topic of soul connections, again, these oversoul groups are definitely going to be bringing in an opportunity for many, many more deep spiritual connection experiences. Don't, you know, focus on that. Make sure it's something that, again, is about a transition and an awakened experience. Did you just hear him snore? But allow yourself to also see what do you want to create? What is the new shift going to be? Because we're also learning how to be master creators. Again, do this in your time away from the grid work. I know I am. And you can also do stuff for yourself. Again, I'm also throwing things out there. Where do I go next? What do you need me for? I wish to attract the next stage of my mission, the next stage of my life's work here to work in conjunction with what I'm already doing now. I will go, whatever you need. Y'all, you know, see what you can do with that. See what you can make happen. Anyway, that's just some, some thoughts for this latest installment here. I hope you enjoyed this talk. Don't forget to check out the forums once again, and we're going to have a very, very interesting October. So I will be back soon. Maybe not quite as soon, but certainly not again a month later. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. Y'all take care, and I will, uh, I'll be feeling you. <laughs>